Section 8.2, Systems of Linear Equations. In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve a system of two linear equations in two variables. So if you take a look at example one, what you will see is one such system, okay? Um, there are two equations and each one has two variables, an X and a Y, okay? And when you think about this word linear, remember linear has line in it. Both of these equations are lines. They happen to be in the general form, okay? So if you look at each one, if you can follow where my cursor is, each one has the form AX plus B, Y equals C, okay? So each of these equations, if you were to graph it, it would represent a line, okay? So since we're considering two of these equations together, okay, to solve this system, what that means is we have to find the value of X and the value of Y, so that if you plug in those values, to both equations, you get a true statement for both equations, okay? So essentially what we're doing is we're looking for the X and the Y that make both equations true, okay? Um, we're gonna be sticking to, in this class, we're gonna be sticking to a very simple system, okay? This is as simple as you can get where you have two equations and two variables, okay? But you could have you know, bigger systems. For example, you could have three equations and three variables. You would have an X, Y, and a Z. Or you could have four equations and four variables, an X, a Y, a Z, and a W, okay? And also, you could get a little crazy where the number of equations doesn't necessarily equal the number of variables, okay? But we're gonna keep it simple. There are a variety of ways to solve a system like this, okay? I'm gonna show you a method called elimination. Okay, but there's also something called substitution, there's the graphical method, and there's even something called matrices. Okay, so there's lots of different ways to do this, but again, I'm going to keep it simple and show you the elimination method. Okay, so here we go. In number one, our system is the following. We have 8x plus 14y is equal to 4, and then the other equation is negative 6x minus 7y is equal to negative 10, okay? So how the elimination method works is this. You want to eliminate one of the variables, either the X or the Y, okay? Does it matter which one you eliminate? No, but the way you're gonna choose is you're gonna try to figure out which one is easier to eliminate, okay? So let me show you what I mean. Um, here, the Y is easier to eliminate, okay? If you look at the Y pieces for both equations, you have a positive 14Y compared to a negative 7Y, okay? So what we want is we want the Ys to go away. So I have a 14Y in the first equation. It would be super awesome if the second equation had a negative 14Y because then you would have a positive 14y and it would cancel with a negative 14y. And then the y's would be gone, okay? So that's kind of the idea of elimination. You're trying to get rid of one of the variables, okay? The way we would change the second in equation to have a negative 14y well, to make this blue term a negative 14y, since it's a negative 7y right now, is if we'd, ha we'd have to multiply by positive 2. 2 times negative 7y is going to give us negative 14y. But we can't just multiply this one term. We have to do it to the entire equation. So every part of the equation would get multiplied by 2. Okay, so again, that would put a negative 14y in this position, which would cancel with the 14y from the first equation, okay? So I'm not going to make any changes to the first equation, so I'm going to leave it alone. 8x plus 14y is equal to 4. 
and then I'm going to multiply 2 through the next equation, the entire thing. So 2 times negative 6y is negative 12, or sorry, 2 times negative 6x is negative 12x, okay, and then multiply here. 2 times negative 7y is going to give us the negative 14y, and then finally 2 times negative 10 on the other side of the equal sign is going to give us negative 20, okay. So we've adjusted the second equation. It was okay to leave the first one alone. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add these equations together, okay? 14y positive minus 14y, these guys are going to cancel, okay? So then you add up your x's. 8x minus 12x is going to give us negative 4x. On the other side of the equal sign, 4 minus 20 is going to give us negative 16, okay? So by eliminating the x, or sorry, by eliminating the y, it's going to be really easy to solve for x here. We just need to divide both sides by negative 4. And so this is going to tell us that x is going to be negative 16 divided by negative 4, which is positive 4. Okay, so that's the x value that we need. Okay, so this is part of the solution. Okay, now we're not done. We need the y value that works as well. Okay, so we're going to have to solve for the y value. Okay. So what you can do at this point, you can go back to either one of the original equations and pop in this x value of 4 and then solve for y, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. It doesn't matter which equation you use. I'm just going to pick the first one. So 8x plus 14y equals 4, okay? I'm going to substitute 4 for x, so it's going to be 8 times 4 plus 14y is equal to 4. This is going to tell me 32 plus 14y is equal to 4. And I have an equation that just has a y. So it's going to be really easy to solve for y, just isolate it. So we're going to subtract 32 from both sides. Okay, we're going to get positive 14y is equal to negative 28. Okay, and now we just have to divide, to divide both sides by 14. Okay, so this tells us that y is negative 28 divided by 14. That's going to be negative 2. Okay, so here is the other part of the solution. To form a complete solution, you need both the x value and the y value. Okay, so as far as writing your answer down, you can write the pieces separately, like x is 4, y is negative 2. You can also write the answer as an ordered pair. Okay. So let me write this down. I'll write over here. To write down your answer, okay, we can say, hey, x is 4, y is negative 2, or we can just write it as an ordered pair, and we know x always goes first, okay? Now, the great thing about doing a problem like this is you can check yourself, okay? If you plug in this x, y pair to both equations, you should get a true statement. So, it's not a requirement to check yourself, but it's a good idea if you have the time, okay? So on this first equation, okay, I've got 8x plus 14y is equal to 4, okay? So let's substitute 4 for x and negative 2 for y and see if we get something true, okay? This is going to be 32 minus 28. Does that equal 4? Yes, it does. We get a true statement. 4 equals 4, okay? It is not good enough to just check one. Remember, the solution has to work in both equations. It may work in the first, but not the second one. Okay, so let's substitute into the second equation, negative 6x minus 7y is equal to negative 10. Okay, again, I'm gonna plug in four for x, and I'm gonna pop in negative two for y. Let's see if this works out to be negative 10, okay? So negative 6 times 4 is negative 24. Minus times minus will turn this plus. 7 times 2 is 14. Negative 24 plus 14 is negative 10, which does equal negative 10. Okay, so this is a correct answer. Okay, for this system of equations, to make both equations true, x has to be 4 and y has to be negative 2.